This is a how-to video on our belt temperature gauge with a relay fan control. This gauge lets us pre-program it to control the relay to kick the fan on at a preset temperature range, then turn the fan off once the belt gets out of that temperature range. Pretty cool, it doesn't let us use our extra voltages such as cars usually don't have. Um, so when you do our first install, we're going to want to reference the instructions. They should be in the box, and if for any reason they're not, you can find them on the website, teamalbaracing.com, up underneath the tech center. You'll have all the instructions that you need, or all the information that you need. Once we get our install done, we want to make sure the biggest thing is we have a chassis ground on that black wire. If we can't go anywhere to connect it to the negative terminal of the battery, a lot of these accessory panels that are marked ground, are, it's fine, it's a ground wire, but unfortunately it hooks up to the negative terminal of the battery, and how this gauge works is it triggers the ground for the relay, and so if we're triggering the ground from the battery, unfortunately we don't get enough resistance to trigger it. So um, just a good chassis ground, a nice clean bolt is all you need. Um, so we're gonna do our first uh, program here, but before we do, we're gonna wanna kick our key on and watch the gauge jump from 120 to 126. We wanna see that first 10% increase in power and that lets us know we've got 12 volts. So again, we're turning our key off, turning it on 120 to 126. Once we confirm that, we know we're good to go and ready to program the gauge. So we're in a Can-Am Maverick here, so the belt is right in between our legs so pretty easy to get to and I got our sensor wire in front of us it's a jacketed weather con weather pack connector that has got two connections inside these two connections are what we're gonna jumper together to program the gauge what's needed to program the gauge is a small piece of wire you can take a the excess yellow that comes on the fan and strip both sides and use this as a jumper pretty easy so the camera over here we're gonna turn our key off turn it on, this gets our gauge into our initial programming function. If for any reason we don't get a good program on our first gauge, turn the key off, start over. Um, if you don't, like I said, make good connection and you try it again, it's unfortunately not gonna be able to program without being reset. So we wanna always start by turning it off, turning it back on and we're ready to program. So these two pins inside the jacketed weather connector need to have one side entered obviously without touching the other side and the other side is gonna make connection for a second and a half. After that half, second and a half of connection has been made, the needle is gonna sweep from 120 to 260 degrees and slowly start falling back. If for any reason the gauge jumps from say 120 to 140 degrees, you don't need to be making connection this whole time. Be patient, the gauge will go from its preset range all the way up till 260. So before you do anything, wait two or three seconds, it's gonna sweep that whole 260 degree range. Once it slowly starts falling back, we're gonna re-tap the sensor wire to jumper, or excuse me, jumper the sensor wire at the set temperature range where we want in between say 140 and 160 degrees, and that's gonna program the gauge. If for some reason it sweeps from 120 to 260 degrees and fastly starts falling back quicker than you can touch it, I mean, once we see it, how it correctly should be done here, you'll know what you're you know, looking for. But if for some reason it falls back fast, don't freak out, just turn the key off, start back over, and we're ready to program. So again, we're connected in one side. We're gonna make a solid second and a half connection. It's gonna go to 160. We're being nice and patient here. It's going straight to 260. So if we would have tapered it again, turned the key off, we would have already you know, lost our chance. But now we're patient. It's going to 260, slowly start falling back. So obviously our red zone's too hot to pre-program the fan. That's when you're already built is nice and hot. You know, the yellow same as well. So we don't wanna be anything above 180. I recommend in between 140 and 160 degrees. So that will turn your fan on in that range. So we just gotta be patient here. Let the needle slowly start falling back. I'm gonna program it when it gets to 140 degrees. So just a little bit further here. Again, I've got the one side still hooked up. Fasten 160. That's where the gauge was programmed before. So as it stops there, again, just continue to be patient. It's gonna slowly continue to fall down and go to 140. We're gonna tap again. The light's gonna flash a couple times. It's gonna fall back down. To save the program, you turn the key off, you turn it back on. Other than that, your 10% spike in power, you're good to go. So now we're gonna check our programming because before we get out on the trail and assume that we're good to go, it's always good to check in the shop. So we've got our sensor. You can do this in the duct of the exhaust, but how this gauge works is it takes a 20 second average of time and gives you a reflection of that 20 seconds. So if we heat up this brass to say 200 degrees in 10 seconds, that's an average that this gauge isn't gonna be able to compute and it's gonna randomly just spike the needle up. If the needle randomly spikes up, it just means we got too much heat too fast. 
So long story short, you need to get a nice 20 second window of slowly heating the sensor up as it would be when it's being used in the car to replicate that scenario. So we're gonna plug it in. It's got a nice jacketed connector, get a good plug, make sure it's plugged in. Turn the key on. Grab the heat gun. I'm gonna use it on high power. When we use it on high power, we wanna wave it back and forth. We don't wanna be giving it, you know, full power right off the bat because that's not you know the temperature that this car is going to be making it's not what the gauge was designed to be used you definitely do not want to use an open flame source this is a gel pack sensor and you're going to boil the gel and it's unfortunately going to break the sensor so we're going to want to act like we're nice you know heating up belt here we see that spike up in power once we see it move up a little bit give it a little bit more heat a little bit more heat we're getting up into that 140 degree range where our gauge is programmed we're going to see the light kick on here any second a little bit more power our light kicks on our fan just kicked on and it's good to go so we're gonna build just a little bit more heat in here and at this point we can say our sensor is good to go so as our fan is cooling our belt down i just have it unplugged for video sake so it's not ridiculously loud when i'm talking but when our you know our fans cooling down our belt here it's a uh, 150 degrees we're gonna Blow on it just a little bit, cool it down. We're getting down to that 145, say 142 range. We're almost down out of our temperature range. Our LED kicks off, our fan kicks off, and we're good to go. So at this point, you need to finish in the install by just putting the sensor back in and you're ready to rip. If you have any questions, you can give us a call. Phone number 619-562-0180. Thanks for your order. Let us know if you need anything in the future.